So the, good, put, the good Simon. Do you want to do the good first? The good. Yeah, okay. There's been some really good stuff. So I was just reflecting then. So we're, we're nearing actually over 500 service users now within the actual whole pipeline of Kiss and Auxilium. So that's 500 people um, that we're helping um, to move on in life and kind of improve themselves or just you know getting the support that they need. Um, but then Kiss started last year um officially probably started to grow the pipeline in February last year and yeah. I was working out that we've helped to house completed properties 32 service users and then we've got another 24 so that's 56 um in total this year so want to replicate that next year Simon definitely and more we want to um, replicate that a month next year but anyhow yeah yeah so <laughs> That's kind of where we are within within the business. Um, do you want to share some goods from your side, Simon, personally? Yeah. <sighs> the goods has just been, honestly, getting to work with Christy and Isabel. It's been amazing, you know, and the people in this group. It's just, we've had a hell of a year, you know, and there's some bads as well as good, but the business has grown. The business has changed a lot. We've learned a hell of a lot about what works for our business and what doesn't. Um, there's been a huge, a huge lot of lessons I certainly learned that, you know, if I don't love driving up and down the motorway, I shouldn't be doing this job because, oh boy, do I put some miles on my car. I think Bryn's probably catching up with me now, but, <laughs> you know, you do crack some miles and, and do some motorway driving, but I actually quite like it. It's, I love what I do now. I, mean, I did my old job for 25 years and I actually go back and do the odd day now and again with my old boss, but I don't miss it. I love what I do. I love talking to people. I love going out, looking at houses. I just, it's just a really nice way of spending your life, you know? It'll be, it'll make us rich one day, but you know, that's, that's secondary at the moment. So for, for us, it really is just about growing the business, spending time with people you love, helping people out ultimately. And it's really nice to do that for a living, isn't it? Yeah. And personally, from my side, I got engaged, which was a real shock. If anybody saw the Facebook post, it was quite hilarious because Jamie held a ring up and took a selfie and he was going, look at this picture. And I'm going, oh yeah, yeah. And then he's like, no, look at the picture, Christy. And there's a ring. And then I started screaming and I think people thought that I was in trouble. So that was quite a funny day. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I think a big one for all of us is each and every one of us left our day job. So we're all full-time in the business. So that's a massive thing. So we're all in the business together now, kind of driving it forward. Um, and my award this month was lovely but it wasn't just mine it was actually for the business and Danny did actually mention that during the presentation even though it was in my name it was actually for all of us because we've done so much together as a team it's just that I happened to be there on the night so that's a massive thing for us to kind of be um kind of recognized by you know by a property group and by it was actually a silent vote so everybody voted, which I think is really lovely. So that's probably our wins as a, as a business, Simon, isn't it? I would say. Yeah, we got to do lots of presentations to people. We got to do podcasts. We did a radio interview, an internet radio interview. We did all sorts of stuff, didn't we? It's, it's really humbling to get to get asked to talk about, you know, what we do on, on those kind of things. And it's nice to be classed as, as people who actually know what they're talking about now. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, yeah, and, and nine nine in total, I think, accounted. We've done nine this year, which is amazing, nearly one a month, yeah. which is fantastic. So, so yeah, that's been amazing. Um, should we go on to the bad, Simon? Oh, God, how long we got? <laughs> <laughs> the bad has been interesting. It's, it's a lot of learning curves, hasn't there, really? I mean, we some of it's our own fault as well. We made a decision sort of near the start of the year that working directly with landlords was not for us. It really wasn't a side of the business that was very profitable. It was a huge time waster. We, we go, you know, three quarters away through a deal with a landlord, and then he would just go, ah, oh, I can make five quid extra a month doing this. So you'd run all over the country, to give him good service. It just wouldn't work. So we made a decision to actually just work with our investor base. We do the odd director landlord one now and again, but not very often. Long term has been fantastic for the business. Short term for the cash flow for the business has been like throwing a hand grenade into the bank account. It really has. It hasn't been a lot of fun. Um, we've got through it. You know, there's been some fun days. There's been some tears. There's been some panic attacks. There's been all sorts of fun stuff going on, you know. but Talking we, about me there, guys. <laughs> didn't say a word. <laughs> I've, never been like, I've been institutionalized for 20 years. I worked for DWP for 20 years. So for me to... Um, leave and then go full-time into a business and become a business owner whereas Simon's been doing this for a very long time it's been quite interesting so Simon's had quite a few meltdowns recently but all is good so what you see in social media isn't always reflective of what's oh yeah 
<laughs> Don't believe the rubbish on social media, honestly. <laughs> We're very good at portraying a picture. <laughs> Yeah. Nick asked a question, where did we meet? We actually met uh, in Asset Academy training. So we all met through that training program. Through me. Yeah. And actually Peter, actually, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it was Peter came over to me, wasn't it? Peter, uh, yeah. Simon's wife. Yeah. She stalks Australians in, in those classrooms. So Chrissy was born in Australia. Um, what else has been not fun this year? Um, I was going to say, though, another positive, which is really, really lovely. I haven't even told you this yet, Simon. DWP contacted me. We're going to do a presentation for the Department of Work and Pensions about everything that we're doing. Have um, we? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that would be really lovely. So that's yeah. something else, another positive, just to talk about everything we've done. Just to throw that into the works. Yeah, <laughs> about that. So there you yeah. go. Some positive. Don't you just love yeah. that we forget that we're doing presentations for the DWP? <laughs> Yeah, um, one of probably the worst things that happened, and it was a decision that it kind of came through, it got thrown up in due diligence, and it was a decision that had to be made by all three of us. Is we actually lost a pipeline of 72 service users, so that was properties that would have housed 72 people. That was a really bad day, but unfortunately, yeah. I, we, we just couldn't continue with that provider. Um, so yeah, that was that was an interesting one, wasn't it? It was quite sad, yeah, it couldn't help all those people really, but. It had to be done. It was about, oh, what was it? It was about, what, 40 grand worth of income to kiss sourcing just went bye-bye. You know, what was it? About 18 grand worth of income to auxilium went goodbye all in, all in one day. But we're very committed to working with the right people. And the way that company operated and decisions they made, we couldn't in good faith do anything with them. And we couldn't put landlords and, and our investors in a position where they're working with a company that acted that way. Yeah, and to be so, fair, at, at the very beginning, everything everything on paper, everything was fine. Just started not feeling comfortable about things and we just thought, no. So unfortunately, yeah. we have to cut that one. You'll get that about 10 yeah. times over because of that decision. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, and our investor, way. that was the thing. Like, I was very, very upset about it. Um, but we got some lovely comments back off our investor base to say that's the reason they'll continue to work with us because we kept them updated about, about what was, was going yeah. on. And that was our investor base who lost money on those deals, by the way, you know. And they never came to us and said, Where's my money? They just said, You know what? That's business. We appreciate the decision you guys made. We understand why you did it. It was in our best interest as well. Where's the next house? Yeah, and, and the fact that we kept them updated. So as soon as we knew something was wrong, because this whole process of trying to get it all sorted probably took about eight weeks, but we kept them updated the whole time. So they were more than happy that we'd done that. So I think communication will probably come up on learns. That's the most yeah. important thing in keeping I mean, that the poor CEO of that company, Isabel stalked her on LinkedIn, got her phone number off her LinkedIn profile and rang her to death on a Sunday till she answered the phone to answer a question because they weren't replying back to us. So, so it happens, I, it does happen. But, yeah. you know, this is the importance of due diligence and, and that communication between providers and things. And it's happened, but we've learned a lot from it. And like I say, it's actually been a real positive um, yeah. going forward. Um, the bad, Simon. That was pretty bad. That wasn't well. a great day. Yeah, that wasn't a great day. But the, I suppose the bad kind of is maybe existing landlords sometimes going behind our backs when we've done a provider introduction in, in intermediary. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often, happened. really. But it has happened, hasn't it, this yeah, year? Yeah, it has. Yeah. Um, people not paying us. Yeah, we had one landlord not pay us and just, yeah, it was what it was. Yeah. No, we, but you change systems to alleviate that, you know, and you learn as a business and you don't be so trusting and... I think the worst thing really is the fact that just we, we sacrificed cash flow this year to change the structure of the business for the long term. And it's it's better for everything that's happening next year. It's better that for everything that's happening with the rate. It's better for the functionality of the business. It's much better for client relations. It's horrendous for the bank account, but such is life. But you have to do those things because if you don't, you're just going to continue working your business in a function that doesn't work. So you have to recognize something that's not working in your business and fix it. And so we did, you know, it just didn't make for a fun three to six months. That's all, you know, but then, you know, you get a day like the last couple of days where a bunch of money drops into the bank account and everything's all good again. Rosy and happy. And yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. yeah, we've built some really, really good relationships, haven't we, with providers that like across the country. Yeah. We've got some great ones on our books. Um, I've been out doing support with them which I loved I think my favorite one was going out and eyebrow waxing the tenant and that was fun um I didn't personally do it the provider did but that was a that was a fun night um yeah so because they had an interview the next day and they wanted to look nice and I thought that was really lovely actually 
Um, so yeah, so we've had um, we've had some really good kind of relationship wise, Simon. Some really good relationships. We should go give an honourable mention to May, our amazing VA, who basically runs our entire auxiliary property management business. I don't know if anybody's noticed on the news, but there's been a typhoon in Cebu in the Philippines, and that's where she lives. So literally, she was sending us messages last night saying that, sorry, I can't work because there's a typhoon. It sounds like our building's going to fall apart. She was apologizing she couldn't work because the typhoon was ripping her apartment building apart. <laughs> and we were like, just put the phone down and please go and get safe. Yeah. You know. And but then yeah, she was so messaging us. Yeah, she was messaging us today saying, I just had to drive on my moped to a different town to get Wi-Fi to tell you I'm going to struggle to work today. We're like, what are you doing, you idiot? Just, just go work. You know, you know, go stop, home. stop go, working. Go look after your family. Yeah, yeah, so that's that, that's the commitment, definitely. But like, yeah. the, like Claire, the fact that you know you approached us, we're so grateful that you approached us and asked yeah. us to do this. You know, we've met some amazing people. Oh, this group has this been call. amazing. The people yeah. we meet here, the opportunities that Brin's helped us out with, we could never thank you in a million years. All of the other amazing people on here. That this group is, I hate honestly, I hate networking. I hate it, but I love coming on this group. You know. I love talking about what we do, why we do it. This group's just friendly. It's lovely people. I love the structure and the way it's done. It just, it's just fun, basically, you know. Networking should be fun. And we're talking to good people, you know, and everybody gives their Friday nights up and we have a good laugh. And But hopefully we give people value as well, you know, and that, that's kind of the whole point of it. Um, what else? The, um, the learns, the learns and takeaways. Where do we start? <laughs> So for me, it's reiterating what Claire said, your network is your net worth. You know, mm. there's amazing people in this group. There's amazing people within the property space, within a lot of different spaces. And it's who you kind of connect with and, and where they take you and, and the way they support you. So for me, that that's like my mantra anyway. It's stuck up on my wall in my study. Um, for me, as a, as a mum, totally um, agreeing with what everybody else has said about burnout. Sometimes, you know, I'll, do stuff with Jacob but then I'll work till like one two in the morning if I need to to get emails and stuff done and that's a bit naughty but we all do it um I think COVID I caught COVID I know a few of you have had that that kind of really threw me because I'm still trying to get over it and become especially with my mental like you know just actually I, I don't know what the word is just trying to you know before I could have been just dead focused and keep going but now I do have to stop so maybe it was I don't know someone's way of telling me to, to slow down a little bit but yeah it's definitely scuppered me and I'm, I'm still kind of getting over it I don't know how everybody else has been after it um spending more time with our family as well Simon I would say both of us we're a bit yeah. that, aren't we we'll still be texting each other in the night time doing stuff yeah um, Peter can probably reiterate that you get told off don't you I just honestly yeah, for me honestly it's just <laughs> support of my wife and the trust she gives in me I mean it's, it's, she's the sugar mum in our relationship at the moment. You know, she brings all the money into our life. She she supports a deadbeat husband running a business, you know, and the trust she has in, in me and Christy and Isabel that all this stuff we're telling her is going to work out, you know, all the money we tip back into setting up the rate, all the money we spend on the business and what we're doing and making things happen that isn't going towards cruises and holidays and all the fun stuff in life, you know, and the sacrifices we've made over the last six to 12 months, you know, and the, just the trust she has in me, you know, that this is going to work and the trust Christy and Isabel have in me as well, you know, and that couldn't have better business partners in the world. They're amazing. Business wise. Uh, work wise, technically, but you know, um, <laughs> yes, Christy, you we, are haven't, we haven't one. really mentioned the REIT, Simon. No, so, really. um, so that again, that was Bryn and, and James. Um, you can talk a little bit about that, Simon. Cause yeah. The, <laughs> It's one of the, this is a network is your net worth thing. Again, you know, it's, it's, I love telling the story. Isabel spoke to James, who's one of Bryn's cohorts in the SAS world, about two and a half, three years ago about how she wanted to set up a fund. And it's an ARE, and it's horribly expensive to do it. And then after that conversation, James being James, a nutbag that he is, decided to work out a way of making it cheaper for people. So, and then obviously I met James completely independently and our business then spurned him to realise that this could work really well within the social and supported housing space with SAS pension money. So the fact that my future business partner spoke to somebody independently three years ago, then came in to be business partners with us. And then somebody 
We spoke to the same person who then set up something that works perfect for our business model that they knew nothing about from three years ago and so on and so on and so on that got to the point now where us, Trish and many other people can set up a REIT for a reasonable amount of money that's achievable that can that can just take Thanks other life. people's money. And honestly, I, I am the world's worst person for raising money in property investing. I am hopeless at it. But I've raised money with this REIT because it's something people understand. It's something they can get their head around. It's a structure they get. And the, the amount of commitment we've had so far from people over the last six weeks is stunning, you know. And we're not, we're not there yet, but the commitments people have, the conversations we have, the willingness of people to, to give us money for what we're doing and why we're doing it. I don't, that wouldn't be possible without Bryn, without James, without that conversation Isabel had three years ago. And, and if we do what we want to do with that, we're going to house thousands of people, not hundreds of them, you know, and that's the whole point of it. And yes, we'll make some money out of it, which is lovely, but, you know, we can house thousands of people by doing that. And that's the whole point of it. And we can house thousands of people while giving people a good return on their money. So it's just an amazing thing to be involved in. Utterly terrifying, but amazing, you know. Oh, Simon, what's it called? What's what called? The REIT. Ocentricity. Oh, you can say it now. I can say it now. I've practiced. <laughs> so I can't get my tongue around it usually. <laughs> it's some, yeah. we, we, yes, we love weird names for things. Okay, Xillium Ocentricity. We love weird names for things, you know. But look, the REIT is going to be amazing over the next few years. It's been terrifying to do honestly it's such a massive step for us to do but you know it, it's working isn't it it's getting there it's 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 yeah. because we've already got the system behind it Simon okay. so building the system for the last two years to then move that into a different mm -hmm. space so for us 2022 will definitely be building the REIT um Simon Isabel um and I are actually and there's a few people here that are going to be members of the board of uh, Soulful Minds which is a CIC which will be for people with mental health housing and supporting them within Birmingham to begin with um so that's going to be something else that's going along in the sidelines so and just growing KISS and Auxilium and just keep housing loads and loads of people as I always say isn't it yeah, there's so much stuff going on we've got a, I've got a guy working alongside us in Australia talking to people about their pension money and that business is growing and there is so much stuff going on honestly in the background that we've honestly spent 12 months just building things and building things and building things mm -hmm. really to make 2022 amazing you know yeah. I mean the Australian stuff is going to be clients will feed into the rate you know we couldn't get their money out of them really not easily any if it wasn't for the rate it's just everything just ties into each other but it's just been a hell of a year putting all of that together and doing all that work and all those presentations and all that back end stuff and coughing up all that money to do it all. And we know 2022 is going to be amazing, but you kind of have to have trust in yourself. Mm. You have to have trust in the plan. You have to have trust in your businesses, you know, and your, and your business partners to do all that. And we've just been building stuff up and building stuff over the whole of 21, haven't we? That really is all going to really tie together in that first quarter of 22, hopefully, isn't yeah. it? But it's been a hell of a time, isn't it? It has. I didn't mention Sue Clark as well, the amazing Sue Clark from yeah. Promised Identity is going to be within um, Soulful Minds as well. She's the other part of Soulful Minds. So um, don't want to miss her out because she's absolutely incredible. So, but yeah, it's definitely going to be an ace year. I also wanted to say thank you. I missed that out of my achievements is being invited to sit on the board of a CIC. So thank you. It was massive respect. To a you. massive honour. Yeah, couldn't, we'd love to have you on there, Bryn. What you bring will be amazing to that, you know. We discussed that, didn't we? We wanted just nice people on there. We mm. wanted good people on there who would give, you know, their honest opinion about things and 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 do good for people. And, you know, that's why you got to ask, because you're an amazing person, just like everybody else on this panel is and, and the people in this group. So couldn't have done it without you, Claire. Onwards with 22. Claire, don't cry. Have we waffled on enough now about our up and down That's roll? That's a good 10 minutes, I reckon, at least. I actually said to Claire, Claire goes, do you want a background picture? Said, yeah, can I have a background picture of a roller coaster, please? Because that's literally been our year, hasn't it? It's just been ups and downs. Like, there's no subtlety in our year, has there? It, it either rains or it pours. We've had one of those years. There's no, none, of, none of this little in-between stuff. It's either been tears or joy. It's not been nothing has it, other than that. No, definitely not. But yeah, you know, it has been it's massive learning. So yeah, but we're still Looking here. Forward to working with everybody here. Yeah, well in the new and year. Thank you, everybody, for your support through the year. It's been amazing.